This is the second part, the neural head screw. Um, and this is what we captured on the whiteboard. This is what you should have in your notes. We're going to head over to AutoCAD and we're going to work on this part now. So I, as the last one, already started working on this part. Again, these are two dimensional views that are being developed um, in AutoCAD, being developed in model space. Those views must line up with each other. They must uh, be in their proper homes. Um, everything's drawn in model space at full scale. So I've already drawn the head portion of the problem, both in my front view and in my end or right side view. And so what we're going to do is we're going to, again, talk about the threaded portion. This one is a schematic screw thread. So um, let's go grab some dimensions off of our, uh, our thing here. So the neural head screw is 1.75. The body of the screw here is 1.75 and it's threaded one and a half. Take note that there is a chamfer here. So it's a 0.02 by 45 chamfer. So let's head back to AutoCAD and we'll proceed with those numbers. Now, um, we need three pieces of data to draw a screw um, or any screw thread, and that's the major diameter, the minor diameter, and the pitch. So I've already used my major diameter to draw my uh, solid line circle here, and I've used my minor diameter to draw my uh, inside circle here, which would be hidden in this case. So I used those two values that we got out of the table. See your notes from that. See the, the, the page that we did on that other video where you guys were taking notes on the actual problems. So I'm going to do the same thing that I did in our last uh, drawing. I'm going to go to the Profile Visible Lines layer, and I'm going to take a line from the quadrant of this circle to the perpendicular of that face, and from the other quadrant to the perpendicular, oops, the perpendicular of that face. And that's going to represent across there my major diameter. Now, on my hidden lines layer, it's not going to matter what layer I do this on. Um, so schematic threads, just as a review, schematic threads, those are the ones that, if we zoom in, can I zoom that? Let's see if we can zoom that. These are the ones that are alternating with the thin line at the major diameter and the thick line at the minor diameter. So the lines that I'm going to draw for the minor diameter in AutoCAD are simply going to be construction lines. So I'm going to go to my construction lines layer. I'm going to take a line from the quadrant here. It doesn't matter how far that goes because it's a construction line. And we're going to come here. Now, the length of the actual body of the screw was 1.75. So I'm going to offset that. Okay, and then I'm going to come back from that because the actual threaded portion was only one and a half. So I'm going to offset back 1.5. And what that's going to show me is this is the portion of this screw that's actually threaded. So I'm going to trim to here and here and get the end of this cleaned up. I'm going to leave this line as it is for now. And then I'm going to zoom in. Now, for screw thread, for schematic screw threads, remember we have thin lines. Hello, AutoCAD. We have thin lines that are going to reach from the white line to the white line. And then we have thick lines that are going to reach from the construction line to the construction line, this being the minor diameter. The spacing between any two lines that are alike is the distance pitch okay so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to offset the distance pitch so what was the pitch for this screw if we look back at our uh, problem on this remember pitch is 1 over the TPI correct 1 over the TPI and so the threads per inch on this guy were 18 so 1 over 18. So I'm going to offset 1 over 
18 from here, and that's going to give me that. Now, that should be a thin line stretching from white line to white line here. So to set that up, here's what I did. I went to my layer property manager, and I set up two layers. Take note. I made a schematic thick layer at 0.6 millimeter continuous line and a schematic thin layer at 0.3 millimeter continuous line. Now you can make those whatever color makes you happy. I don't care. Red's my favorite color. It makes me happy. So I have a schematic thick and a schematic thin. Schematic thin would be my major diameter lines. Schematic thin would be my minors. So this one's going to be a major. So it's going to go to schematic thin. And then I need a line in between these two. That's a thick line. And it has to be halfway in between these two. So if I offset 1 over 18, because that was my pitch, half of 1 18th would be what? Okay, so you have to say what's 18 times 2, and that's 36. So it would be 1 36th. So I'm going to offset 1 over 36. And that's going to give me a line right in between. Now I'm going to trim that line from here to here. And that's going to be a thick line on my schematic thick layer. Okay? So that's one thread. That's one pitch right there. Now, I can literally be done with these now. I don't need them anymore. And the reason for that is I'm only drawing these two lines, and then I'm going to do a pole or a rectangular array. So a few weeks ago, we learned the polar array command. Today, we're going to learn the rectangular array command. And so I'm going to zoom out just a little so you can see how this operates. On the Modify panel, Home tab, Modify panel, Bottom right item, remember we opened that bucket and found polar array? We're going to make a rectangular array. Take good notes. You're going to use rectangular array a lot from now on. Okay, so I select that. My command line says, hey, select objects. I want to array this line and this line. How do I tell AutoCAD I'm done? I hit Enter. And what it does is it makes a mess. And that's okay because we're gonna straighten that mess out. So rectangular array is like, um, it's like making a spreadsheet, you have rows and columns. So notice up here on my contextual ribbon, this is my rectangular array ribbon, <coughs> I have columns and I have rows. So think about that, columns are going up and down vertical like this, and rows are the horizontal ones going like this. So I only want one row. So I'm going to change my row value to 1. And when I change my row value to 1, it makes those instances above go away. Now, as far as columns go, I don't necessarily know how many columns. Or do I? I actually do know how many columns. Because think about this. The spacing between our columns is going to be 1 over 18, which is our pitch. And notice that sets my distance. Now, two things. These are going the wrong way, and I don't know how many. So I'm going to change that between number to negative, oh, negative 1 over 18. Hello. Why are you not sure? There you go. So a little visual thing there. Um, so negative 1 over 18. And then how many of these are there? Well, here's what we know. There's 18 in every inch. And we're going an inch and a half. So that's going to be 18 plus half of 18. So what's half of 18? Half of 18 is 9. And 18 plus 9 is... 27. 
So we're going to go 27 columns at negative 1 over 18, and that's going to come out perfectly on my line for the length of that thread. When I'm done with this, I'm going to close array. Now remember, make sure associative is off. That should not be blue. I'm going to close the array, and I can delete that line. And those are my schematic thread representations. Looks good. Wow. Very nice. Um, now, I do need to put a chamfer in at this end. And that chamfer was 0.02 by 45 degrees. So the chamfering tool, we're going to do a 2D chamfer. And the 2D chamfer tool is on the modify panel, middle row, in the last bucket underneath the two-dimensional fillet. So here's my 2D chamfer. Look at my command line. It says select the first line or, and it gives me all of these uh, options. I want to set the distance, so I'm going to go D for distance. It says what's the first chamfer distance? It's 0.02, enter. And what's the second chamfer distance? It's always going to set the second equal to the first unless you give it another value here. So I'm going to hit enter to take that. And then I'm going to chamfer between this line and this line. And again, chamfer. This time, it's already running at 2 and 2, this line to this line. Now, chamfer put those two lines on the construction line because the construction line is current. I'm going to go put them on the profile visible lines layer. Now, if indeed there is a chamfer here, then there is also a visible edge here. So my part's going to look like that. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. Um, I did tell you when we were doing our planning session that I'd show you how to do uh, the neural here. So um, I might have set a layer for this. Let's go look. I did. I set a layer called neural hatch. I made it yellow. Uh, you can make it any color you want. It's a continuous line. It is a thin line, 0.3. Okay. And so with that, line, with that layer current, I'm going to use a hatch here. So remember that hatch is on the pull down from the draw. So it's the draw pull down bottom left item. And I'm going to use the angle pattern. I'm going to fill in here and here. And I need to adjust both the angle and the scale. So the angle for the angle pattern, I'm going to set at 45. And the scale here, I'm going to set at, I don't know, 0.25, maybe a little smaller. Let's go 0.125. Oh, I like that, 0.125. Make sure it is not associative. Make sure it is not associative. We're going to close the hatch creation. There we go. That's beautiful. Okay. Um, I did set this up on an ASME A single view layout, and I used a scale of two to one. Remember, whatever scale you use, it must be a legal scale from the green scale sheet. Um, I am going to unfreeze my dimensions that were on here. And so, as a reminder, I use the leader command to put in my thread callout. I use the leader command to put in my chamfer callout. And I use the leader command to put in my diamond neural callout. Okay, so that's it for this one. I'll see you in a minute over on the detailed one. Okay, guys, this is the second part, the neural head screw. Um,